the United Kingdom and the United States is, is successful. I now recognize myself for an opening statement. From its increasingly aggressive posture in the waters surrounding Taiwan to Chairman Xi's stated goal to unify with Taiwan, the malign actions of the Chinese Communist Party pose a clear and present danger. I've seen China's tactics firsthand. I recently led a congressional delegation to Asia where I met with our Indo-Pacific Command, the Seventh Fleet, and leaders in Japan, South Korea, and Taiwan, including President Tsai. After I met with President Tsai, the CCP sanctioned me, a badge of honor as far as I'm concerned. In response to my delegation's visit and Speaker McCarthy's meeting with President Tsai, the CCP launched more than 70 aircraft into Taiwanese airspace and deployed 11 warships, including an aircraft carrier to encircle the island nation. The CCP is testing their capabilities and Taiwan's vulnerabilities in preparation for potential invasion. This will not intimidate us. In fact, it only strengthens our resolve to foster a more innovative defense industrial base that can develop and supply weapons for deterrence and, if necessary, for defense. After seeing Taiwan's defense capabilities firsthand, <clears throat> I can say that they're not where they need to be. Weapon sales I signed off on four years ago and the ranking member have yet to make it to Taiwan. President Tsai asked me, where are my weapons? I paid for them. The war in Ukraine has shown us that weapons are needed before, not after conflict erupts. Now more than ever, we need to work with our allies to counter this growing threat. The AUKUS partnership between Australia, the United Kingdom, and the United States is just that, and it will establish critical deterrence measures. However, for this trilateral partnership to succeed, we must reform prohibitive policies and complicated arms export rules as soon as possible through bipartisan legislation. It is this committee's responsibility to examine the policy and effectiveness of the United States government for military sales and the international traffic and arms regulations known as ITAR, a regulatory measure which controls the export of defense and military technologies from U.S. defense companies. Last month, I held a classified roundtable with our AUKUS partners uh, first and then from our U.S. industry representatives to discuss the challenges we face in the region due to growing CCP aggression and how best to address them. We heard from them that much more needs to be done. Specifically, ITAR and our antiquated arms sales processes need legislative fixes for AUKUS to be successful. One of our AUKUS partners dedicates 1% of their annual defense budget to simply navigate U.S. export controls. In another case, it took a year and a half of paperwork to support the upgrade of a weapon system that we previously sold to them. Our approach to defense and military technology exports is in dire need of reform. This administration has failed to deliver, so Congress took bipartisan action in the last NDAA. My Taiwan Enhanced Resilience Act ensures that there can be creative solutions, such as foreign military financing grants, training for Taiwan forces, and war reserve stockpiles to bolster Taiwan's defense. Chairwoman Young Kim's Arms Export Delivery Solutions Act mandates the administration to report on why our weapons to Taiwan are delayed and to provide interim capabilities in the face of these delays. I also include a provision to better bring American innovation into Pentagon procurements to address delayed weapons development and address high-tech challenges like quantum computing, hypersonics, and artificial intelligence. Rebuilding our arsenal of democracy will require new thinking and innovative dynamic companies. To that end, the House recently passed legislation that I introduced with the ranking member to strengthen the AUKUS partnership through cooperation on advanced capabilities. This legislation focuses on ensuring the State Department is authorizing technology transfers quickly to fully support implementation of this partnership. I will continue to lead efforts to help ensure the successful implementation of AUKUS throughout this Congress through additional bipartisan legislation. The longer outdated and costly regulations stand in the way of successful implementation, the more it plays into the CCP's hands and erodes our closest allies' security. We are in a great power global competition. 
And for far too long at both the Department of Defense and State Department, it's been business as usual. The year-long delays are unacceptable. We need results, not interagency finger pointing. We can no longer accept the status quo of an ineffective and outdated system. The United States does not seek conflict, but only through strength can we provide the deterrence necessary to secure the peace in the region and around the globe. History has shown that projecting weakness invites aggression and emboldens dictators and despots. I still believe in Ronald Reagan's policy of peace through strength, and that was a doctrine that defeated the Soviet Union and one we must continue to employ to project American strength across the globe. The chair now recognizes the ranking member, uh, Mr. Meeks. Thank you, Mr.